What's it like going from the stage to the television screen? How do I apply the craft to voiceover? What's it like juggling a family and a successful career? We've set out to find the answers to, and more. This is Call Time with Duke and Joe. All right, wow, we're finally here, Joe. It's I thought we'd never get here. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we're finally here, and we're finally here with our first guest, and then we missed a couple weeks mostly because Joe ran out of his meds. Oh, either that or your mom finally lets you out of the playpen. I think. Oh, wow. That's hurtful. They're right here. Well, you know boom, what? You know, boom, I got a great boom. comeback, but I'd rather introduce our great guest here. That's going to be our first guest on call time, Angel Parker. Thank yes. you for being this with us. Angel Parker, great to see yeah. you. Hi, great guys. to see Thank you. you. Angel is as an actor who has worked from video games to primetime television and such phenomenal shows as People vs. OJ, uh, Marvel's Runaways, as well as Disney's Lab Rats. I- I'm glad to have her as our first guest. Well, and you were you. just on set of The Rookie, right? Yesterday, yes. Yeah. <laughs> just yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is your... Second time on The Rookie? Or? Yes, I play the captain's wife, so uh-huh. I get to come in, pop in, I'll be in the next episode It was so well. recurring, got a little bit recurring. A little recur, yeah, I was on NCIS LA last week, so oh, nice. the so, so business is starting to... Yeah, tell us how, how the business is cooperating with yeah. the pandemic and what's, what's going on there. Well, it's interesting, it's difficult, there's a lot more self-taping, so sort of I'm watching you guys light and sound and you know, figure out everything because we have to do, I converted my little garage into a self-taping studio. As everyone has in this Got an right iPhone now. 11, I mean I have one of these nice cameras, but I swear the issues with the blurry and the but, sound. And those iPhones, and the, like their cameras on yeah, them now are just... I'm just gonna do, with, I'm just gonna do that now, but um... We've learned how to do it. My husband's an actor as well. You know Eric mm-hmm. Nettinger. And so we have been probably just in the last three months been doing a lot of self-taping. Oh, um, but for the first four or five months of pandemic, there was no there was no work. Everything just completely shut down and stopped. So right, that right, was right. Tough. So, do you, do you, so you get good at this, at this self-taping I mean, after I a while. I think as an actor, you get necessity. good at adapting. So, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It, it's not, it was not our first time self-taping. We'd self-tape before if you're traveling or if you are not able to get into a, a room, you're, they don't want to see you. That's happened a lot for me where they're not, they don't want to see you or they don't think you're right for the role. So they'll mm-hmm. ask you to throw down a tape or I booked runaways off of a self-tape. Oh, really? I was in Canada shooting something different and wasn't available and I had to Google self-tape facilities in Toronto and sent a self-tape in for, for Runaways. Right, and then, so it seemed like the industry was kind of moving that way. It was because it's easier and convenient and technology was moving it in that direction. But now you can't go into the room. You still always wanted to go into the room. It was never your first choice. You never mm. want a self-tape. Right, right. It's not, you, you lose that personality the, that you can yeah, bring into the room. Yeah, plus you have to be the director and the, and the lighting and sound and editor and you have to pick it and, and you don't get that adrenaline of, of being in the room. Well, not people. if you hire Momus Media to help you. Well, there you go. Yeah, Come to my house. <laughs> Are you getting a cut? <laughs> it's our plug for our producers here in the studio. Uh, we're I know, very the, legit. Fabrizio like and Ollie and, and Rashawn I'm, over there. And I'm honestly Charlotte's way back in the corner. Stealing, stealing all of the things that you've done because um, we need it. No, we self tape all the time. It's like googling backdrops and how do you get rid of the shadow behind you and all these things mm-hmm. that we right. are we're figuring out. But now you know, I, I we book. You start to book after a while. You're wow. like, oh, okay. You this just is... keep grinding and eventually it gets there. Yeah, eventually you figure out how. How to submit your best audition. The good thing is you can do a lot of takes. You can figure it out and send your best it's, one. Get yeah. it just yeah. right. Absolutely. That doesn't always Absolutely. happen. Um, you sometimes just have to stop yourself from doing it over and mm-hmm. over again. I, I don't have that problem too much, but well, yeah. Now that I have, I do have a friend who's kind of like who likes to do it over and over again. I'm oh, like, you, you did a great. You're you your third great. time. You're just chasing, you know, chasing. Yeah. The gotta trust at this that. Point. Gotta trust yeah. yourself once in a while. Yeah. So, so let's get into you a little bit. Wait, wait, wait. Hold this. Do you have? Do you think that the business is going to move more towards that even after this passes? Do you think that we will? I mean, it sort of depends on how society kind of comes back together. I think that now you have more freedom to say, "No, I'll send in a tape." So. I think that it allows you to be able to do that. So if there's going to be in-person sessions, there's been a couple commercial callbacks or things that they've wanted me to go into the room, but it's very awkward and weird. And I had one commercial callback that I self-taped to get the first call, got a callback. It was in-person. It was my first one. They made you 
sign in on your phone in your car and that was your waiting room and then you were told to go in and you know everything's oh. socially distanced everything's clean and very kind of stressful because it was the first time i've right. been back and it was for like lays potato chips or something like that and i go into the room and finally you know get my one individual bag of chips oh you know mm -hmm. you're not allowed to touch anything and get into the room and i'm like you know they're far away uh, you know behind the camera and doing something else and then the director pops in and he's on zoom and i'm like you gotta be kidding me i could have <laughs> 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 I, I, like, I been that. at home too if you're at home you know, i thought i was gonna be in the room so um it's just a matter i think of everyone becoming good at it mm -hmm. I, I think that that's must be frustrating for casting and producers that some people's tapes are good just visually and some aren't and some people pay right. money to go get their tapes made and and not everyone can afford to do that. And, and some so. people book the room. You know, they might not look yeah. too well on the, 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 the self tape. Or yeah, the but, uh, but uh, uh, you know, the, the counter thought to that is it is a visual medium. You do have to look good on camera. You do have to know how to use the lens a bit. So, you know, we're all learning. Yeah, it could get interesting and change and stuff. So I hard. guess so. I think they might just sell like a standard backdrop for all actors. Like, right. this is what it's, you should hey, use. Hey, Fabrizio, there's your money right there. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> there's a lot of notes that. now in the self-taping. There's a lot of notes, like yeah. not in front of a window. Make sure that your eye line's close to the lens and make sure, you know, there's all these rules now that I'm like, oh, don't have gum. Don't chew gum. I'm like, who's chewing gum? That doesn't matter. <laughs> <That's laughs> yeah. right? Some that's of the, different. yeah, some of the things I'm, I'm Would you just, walk into a room with gum? Uh, some people do. I mean, Britney Spears has always got some gum in her mouth. So. Yeah, but she's Britney Spears. Yeah. She's a superstar. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So maybe she's doing maybe something. Maybe she's got something going on. Yeah. Well, maybe well, she's doing something. Can right? I move on now? Oh, yeah, please. I'm just interested in how that yes. would work yes. out. Yes, yes, yes. Well, please, no. No, so I, I don't want to get into you. Uh, Am I taking up your time? Go ahead. <laughs> we got nothing but time to kill. Yeah, I'll get up. She's ready. You? Okay. This guy. Um, all right, I want to get in um, to where you, you a little bit. So, so you're from LA, right? Born and raised, yep. And um, was acting always your first choice? No, not at all. I didn't even know much about the business. I grew up, I, I was born at UCLA Medical. I was born and raised in Koreatown, um, 1992 with the LA riots. And my family mm -hmm. then moved to South Orange County. So I ended up going to high school in San Clemente, which is this little beach town. Uh, and it was very much a culture shock uh, at a very kind of racially charged time. So it was very hard to make friends. And I saw the musical, they were doing Guys and Dolls. And I was like, oh, that looks like fun. And signed up for drama the next year. It was more a way to make friends and have some fun. I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about the business. I don't have any family that are actors. I don't, I didn't know anything about it. And then I just, there was a good drama department there and a good teacher, Amy Journey. Shout out to Amy Journey. And you know, they had a drama camps that you could go to and different things. And by the time it came to apply to college, I was like, I think I'm going to go to acting school and went to a little acting fair or something. And they had all these different schools. And I remember meeting Lyle, who's no longer with the Academy. Wow. We're from back in the day, right? Lyle and Wilson. he was there and I had, yeah, Lyle Wilson. May he rest in peace, May right? May he rest in peace, yeah. absolutely. And I had my little clipboard, so I was very studious. and. <laughs> interviewing all these schools and you know auditioned and got in and I was like okay I'll go there it sounded fun and it was only two years so I thought oh I can get back to LA that's so all I wanted to do was move back so got back to Pasadena is where the campus was then and uh two years later love that you know, campus. Was, was that, was that <laughs> the uh, was was that the, the National Thespian Festival do you remember I don't know. Like, you mean the fair that was right, the college yeah. fair? It might have been. I just remember there being like 30 or 40 different schools all mm -hmm. at tables. Because that's, that's where I, I, we're talking about the American Academy yes. of Dramatic yeah. Arts, that's where you went. Yes. Uh, and that's, you know, where Joe teaches and I went. Um, but but that's, I, I auditioned at the, the National uh, Thespian Festival. I so think, I was just wondering if that's I don't, Gosh, you're talking about more than 20 years ago now. Oh, no. um, so I don't remember where I auditioned. I, no, I do. <gasps> I do. I auditioned at the campus. No. So mm -hmm. I, because I'm, I li it was only an hour drive. Mm -hmm. I auditioned because I remember it was in the dance room. Oh, who was in the dance you? room? It was Lyle and wow. Terry Hayes. And then there was another person. I don't remember. Terry what auditioned me too. Sitting there and you had to do your two monologues. I think I did Joan of Arc or something, you know. Oh, wow. Nice. And then something else. Yeah, I don't remember quite, but oh yeah, there's a little budding. There's still still got a little something <laughs> up there. Yeah, no, I auditioned at the campus. But I went to a place to find out about schools. Right. Is what right. I was right. that's what I was referring to. Yeah. So, so what were your interests? I mean, you say you didn't you weren't acting wasn't on the first forefront of your brain. What were your other interests? What else did you Like growing up? 
Yeah, um, in, in high school even. In high school, I, I, like I did dance team, I did choir, I was on the student government. I was a very eager girl. <laughs> um, but I just got really active and, you know, I, I was easy to talk and meet people. And I switched schools a lot here in L.A., so I was just one of those people that was liked it? to hang out. So mm -hmm. I just kind of joined all the clubs and figured that's how you make friends. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it worked. <laughs> right. Was there something that you, that you had to let go or say bye to in getting, because drama kind of consumes your life once you're in it. Was there something that you kind of... You no, I mean, I think it's it took over my life, and so then that, that was just all that I wanted to do, and um, I, even now my corporation name is No Backup. Like, I didn't have any other choice. Right. Choice. I still don't have any other choices. I'm mm -hmm. like, God, I need another skill. Don't I need another skill? No. <laughs> no. Um, I... I just fell in love with it and it became something that I was just really passionate about. I never, I never um, wanted to do anything else. And so I just worked really hard at it. And, you know, we still go up and down with all, with, with work, but it's the, still the thing that jazzes you the most, you know? I mean, sure. even yesterday I'm on a set and everyone's in shields and masks and I'm, I'm literally, and I'm using that word correctly, inside a bubble. They put, they zipped me up in a clear tent and I'm sitting there like, oh, this is this is acting now. Okay, this is acting. Here we go. Wow. Yeah. And then, you know, unzip out of the tent, go out, rehearse in a mask and shield, trying to connect with the man who plays my husband, who I haven't seen now in a long time, and, and do our scene. And, like, we've been married for 20 years. And um, and then you remember, you know, it's like it's like riding a bike. You're like, oh, yeah, I love this. Yeah. I love this. So. Just about, well, you, you left for the Academy at a young age, right? Like yes, you, I was 16. You were rather young. Wow. Yeah, that's... I was. I graduated high school at 16, and I went right after high school. So. Oh, early. Yeah. Early. Yeah. early. Wow. Yeah, so I graduated at 18, and then I did the company So that, that year. So by 19, I was out. and I think Betty Carlin helped me get a manager right out of school, and um, I started doing commercials and got my SAG card because I was um, in a Denny's commercial with a fellow alum who was my, my buddy, Teddy Armstrong, he graduated with me and he, we, swing dancing was really big at that time. And like Big Bad Voodoo Daddy and all these big bands right. came back. Uh, and so uh, we were all into it. And so... Brian they, Setzer. Stokes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Brian Setzer Orchestra. So we were, we swept, you know, did swing dancing and we learned it in school. We did it at the academy. I don't know if they still teach that, but they... Oh, all kinds. We had a style. <laughs> yeah, they had something. And so I came in as his partner for a commercial audition. He didn't end up getting it. I got it. And I remember getting my side card, so still to this day, he goes, yeah, that Dings commercial, I got you. I'm, I'm the one that got you into the union. <laughs> yeah. uh, did, what did you, uh, you know, you studied at the American Academy. Uh, what did it do for you? What did, that, what, what did that do for you as an actor? You know, at the time, it was just so much fun. I mean, we had so much fun. Every day was acting. It was a new, different day, and we were with the same section, and we all were so close, and we were all so passionate. It was just this time of pure joy and I remember Betty Carlin saying this is the most you're ever going to act in your life mm -hmm. enjoy it you know especially even the company years if you're doing five plays in one year you never will do that ever again and you're kind of like well I'm going to be successful right, right. and I'm totally going <laughs> to be you know and I've never to this day done five plays in one year in a row. I, no. no and I've been in rep <laughs> companies I've done Shakespeare in the Park and I've done three three plays at once or something but never five mm -hmm. so she was right um, but now looking back on it and knowing and, and have, you know, studied at different classes and different places and um, studied under different teachers and coaches, what the Academy did was give you sort of a, a wide knowledge of all these different styles and different ways of acting and different ways that you can kind of find your own method. It's not just we teach you this one method and this is what it is. They taught you a bunch of different styles, different methods, different, you know, approaches to acting and you kind of have this this wealth of information i meet a lot of actors now that are tv actors and they're and they sort of just kind of fell into it and they never had formal training or didn't go to juilliard or yale or you know these or, or it have been mfa or something like that and they always feel like oh i'm not sure if i if i know what i'm doing i don't know i just kind of do what i do they don't really feel they have a craft or that they have something to fall back on. They say you, you fall to the level of your training when you're stressed or you're nervous or you don't have enough time to prepare, that you fall to the level of your training. And so the Academy gave me this sense of, of like I have this pool of knowledge that I, I, well, I did go to school and I did graduate, so yeah. maybe I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, not completely winging it, even though you may feel that way, but 
you you learn how to manipulate your voice and how to project and how to research and how to learn a dialect and all these different things that you never know when you're going to need any of these skills or how mm. they're going to you know come through in your acting but you kind of end up piecing it all together it's not just i know this way to do this and how to hit this one mark i kind of know how to do a lot of things so when i'm thrown into a situation or i'm asked to do something out of my comfort zone i'm kind of i've done that a lot before so what you're saying is always keep all of your notes yeah, sure. It's, it's funny you say that because I'm now, you know, trying not to be a hoarder and going through all of my, you know, suitcases and hat boxes of things mm. that I've saved my whole life. And you find these old, like, I still have my dialects and my phonics, my phonetics that we would write out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I have all these books and, well, you know, it's really cool yeah. to look through. Um, all Just the wealth of knowledge that this, this, this school well, gave what, me. What is your technique and how do you, what's the one that speaks to you the most and that you, how do you apply that to TV? If you learn it on the stage, how do you apply it to your... To well, your uh, that's a good question. I, I do a lot of research. I do a lot of research. I really um, want to know the world that I'm in, the genre that I'm in. So if it's television, what genre is it? What, mm -hmm. Is it a half hour? Is it a single camera? Is it a, is it a procedural? Is it who, who's the showrunner? Is it Aaron Sorkin? Or, you know, the, the difference between Modern Family and Schitt's Creek. I mean, they're both single camera comedies, but they're a little exactly. bit different. Yeah. And those are the same genre, essentially. Right. Uh, versus uh, The Rookie or NCIS or Handmaid's Tale. I mean, there. so I do a lot of research on just what the project is and then sort of the given circumstances. So they're in, it's a lawyer, where they're lawyers, they're in Boston, they're um, in the 80s, they're mm -hmm. what, what, whatever it is, you know, prequel versus OJ, okay, it's 1994 and what's happening and, you know. Um, Different time. Different, yes, yes, all of, all of these things, and then who is the person, and then whatever information they give you, and then you sort of fill it up with, you know, um, your imagination, and then it's the relationship of who I'm talking to, and where, how did we get to this point, and what's happened before this, and then when you've kind of built this whole pool of, of stuff, you can just dive in and then just easily talk to the person, because I know who I am, and I know who you are, and I know why we're here, and I know where we've been, and I know what's happening in the world at this time. So then it's very easy to just say the words on the page, um, like learning lines. I do that at the very end. Um, mm -hmm. I do all this other work. You do all the work and then you, you sing it in the lines. And then I just talk right. to the person as this person. It's always interesting how it boils down to that. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day, right. you do all of it, but it's you come and you just talk to a person and you yeah. listen to that person. Exactly, but I do, I mean, like I said, I joked before with the cameras, well, I, I probably know a, more than I need to know about the O.J. Simpson case and right. trial because I was a part of the project. Why wouldn't I mm -hmm. watch the whole trial? I had an audition last week, maybe, for Succession. Oh, and I love I that show. A, Yes, but I haven't seen it. Uh, or I saw the first episode when it first came out just to know. I watch every show once. It's intense. One of the yes. Colgan boys. Yes. Is that the one with the, yeah. Yeah, the family, and they're all vying for the, the throne. You know, it's very Shakespearean. <laughs> um, these are awful people, awful New York you know, but I watched then sort of just because I don't have much time, I can't watch the whole show. And so I still do, but I watched like the recap of every single episode and then watched the final episode before I then started to oh, look wow. at my sites and started to look at what I oh, needed okay. to do because I needed to know how I fit into this world. You don't know the world. So mm -hmm. you just sort of, and then sometimes you're not given a script. You're not given anything. You do research on the producer. You do research on whoever, you, whatever, however they describe it. And sometimes you just dive in and you're like, this is similar to this and let me just go. And maybe they don't know how to define it or what it's going to be, you know? <laughs>